thank you everyone for being here. Uh, yeah, so my name is Manu, um, I'm part of AIMS as well, and I'm part of the group that does the monitoring of the Great Barrier Reef. And for the last three decades, we've been going to the reef um, every single year, and we've been measuring um, how, how well it's, it's going, so when it's actually disturbance has happened, and that, that has been helping us a lot to understand um, where are the things that we need to pay attention to, and what's the, what's the outlook of the Great Barrier Reef to, to help support them the decision making and the conservation that happens. So I want to talk to you about the coral reef monitoring um, that we do in the Great Barrier Reef. Um, that, the, the work that we do is part of um, our core business. So this is our main, um, one of our main um, research. And what, when we're actually looking at understanding how the Great Barrier Reef changes, it's very important to understand the scale of it. So everyone been talking about um, the, the Great Barrier Reef being seen from scale, the number of reefs that is involved, thousands of them and the kilometers that it covers. Um, but one of the important parts of it is also when you look at the scale is to understand the diversity of it. And I think Gareth was alluding to it. And I, would, I wanted to show it to you in pictures. Um, the, the Great Barrier Reef and, and the coral reef and the Great Barrier Reef are enormously diverse. Not only just the coral species that live there, but it's also how the reef looks like and, and how, uh, how variant it is in terms of the composition of different coral species, but also uh, soft corals, fish, and all the diversity that, that, um, com that actually becomes part of the Great Barrier Reef. So that immediately poses a challenge. So how are we going to actually understand how the reef is changing and, and how we're going to um, reflect that back? Because if there's, there's a lot of changes, there's a lot of um, different individuals will be, behave differently. So we have to really account for all these different um, combinations of organisms in, in across the Great Barrier Reef. And, we're, and how we do that is that we go to the reef every single year. Um, we spend like about 100 to 150 days in, uh, of the year right on the reef and, and we collect a lot of images. So that's one of those um, metrics that we use. And those images are like the ones that you're seeing right here is the images that help us to actually dive deeper into um, what's, what different organisms are the ones who are part of the seafloor. So you can see this image where there are some corals, um, there's some algae, there's some soft corals. Um, and the way for us to actually quantify that is that we lay points on the image, just as you do in the virtual reef diver. And those, those images, um, those points in the image gets annotated so some of them we actually get to the species or the genera, some others that are a little bit more generic about the sort of the, the functional role that they, they provide. And each of the points actually, when we actually put them together, give us the amount of core cover for different organisms and the total amount of coral cover. But, but you see this little image here, it only covers about like half a square meter. So really to understand how it's happening, we have to take lots of images and we need to actually do it repeatedly in different reefs to understand how the reef are actually changing. So that when it comes to a full year of assessment, we take about like 35, 50,000 images and we have collected about like a million images so far. Um, so how do we get to actually analyze that part? So there's a lot of time invested into do that and, and it is painstakingly, um, um, it, it takes a lot of effort to actually go through it because you want to be very, very precise about the different species of organisms that, that are in this image. Um, but lately, um, there have been a lot of developments in the machine learning space. And um, machine learning is actually um, a whole field in computer vision and in computer science that is evolving quite rapidly. And, and it's, it's also often referred as artificial intelligence as well, because what we do is actually um, provide the machine some information and the more information we provide, the more the machine learns about it. So you can see um, an easy example is the driver's less cars, where they're learning about the environment and they learn to drive. Or, or Picasso or Facebook recognizing your photos and the photos of your auntie and your cousins in your libraries. So the machines start learning what actually makes each of us separately or each of the corals individuals. So it learns um, about seven million features that actually identify a coral or a person in an image. And then it starts sort of propagating that and, and, uh, and, and uh, predicting what will be, where, where a coral will be in an image. 
So you can see, for instance, um, these are the points that what I showed you before. So the machine takes an area around the point and start learning the seven million features around it. So the colors, the texture, how spiky it is, how, how round the coral, the polyps. And then what, when it actually put it all that together, it comes out with a probability. Oh, well, it's likely that this is this type of acropora, or it's likely that it's this type of, um, of um, soft coral. And, and that information actually starts sort of labeling all the images. So the machine can actually go through images 700 times faster than what we can normally do. And it's very, very accurate. I'm talking about sort of like percentage, one or two percentage differences between what we can do as an expert and what the machine can do. And, and this is kind of, it's rapidly evolving and we're using it um, in, 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 at Ames and many other institutions as well, because it, it does help us to actually go through a large archive of images, but then we can actually spend a lot more time understanding why the reef is changing and how the reef is changing to actually be able to advise conservation. Um, so I wanted to just close this, um, this short presentation with a bit of an idea of why monitoring and why the technologies are important. So you can imagine that um, systems are changing and, that, and we know for a fact that nature is actually changing. And the more we develop, the more we exploit resources, the more climate change actually um, increases the effects on nature, the more the system changes. But as the system changes, it's, it does actually the services that Angela was talking about, where um, we, the, the services that we benefit from are actually changing. Therefore, we as a society are being affected. So that's a circle there, because the more we are affected, the more we actually impact our, our own ecosystem as well. Um, from the point of view of the science uh, uh, and, and the advice of management, as ecosystem change, we need to actually be faster and more efficient uh, assessing how much is it changing, where is it changing, where is it going, and, and that provides the insights in, in terms of the trends of the reef uh, and the health of the reef and the different compositions of the reef, how is it actually changing, to so then we can synthesize it with the help of our friends, the statisticians and the mathematicians to actually help to, to create uh, models that, that align all that complexity and that create the awareness that, that drive actions. So by understanding what's happening and why is it happening, then we can advise conservation strategies or managers to, to make decisions about the reef. Where this has become important is when you actually bring technology. Because therefore, like, if we actually, if systems are changing, the are as big as the Great Barrier Reef and they're changing really fast, we're losing our capacity to advise on a timely manner. So technology like machine learning can actually help us speed up that process to be able to be more efficient in informing conservation actions.